This is Creating Your Encore Career and Becoming a Silver Entrepreneur with your host, Lynn Friest. Lynn will share ideas and expert advice from people that are walking in your shoes and living their encore careers, where they want and at the pace they want. You'll start a company of one with confidence and knowledge to live a fulfilled life of freedom and ease. Lynn is a coach and leadership consultant whose mission is to show senior leaders and experts how to start something refreshing and new after a full career in the corporate environment. Hello and welcome to this episode of the podcast, Creating Your Encore Career and Becoming a Silver Entrepreneur. This is episode 146 and we're continuing our talk around You Are the Brand. And this one's going to be about why you need a platform and products in an encore career. So making the leap from being a corporate leader and expert into becoming a solopreneur can be daunting. But the rewards are great. You can work when you want, where you want, and do the work you love. And I can be a guide that helps you make that happen. I will soon be offering openings in my group coaching program. These programs will enable you and a peer group to launch and develop your own encore careers. So to get a powerful start, contact me. So what are the next steps in creating your encore career? Maybe you have a good sized stock portfolio, but now you're maybe wondering if it'll let you live the life you want for the next 30 plus years. So are your goals changing? You know, it could be you now want to focus on earning, learning, and leaving a legacy. Or again, as I said earlier, you want to see about working when you want, where you want, and working on the things you love. And of course, as I've said earlier, the bottom line is people in the second half of life are essential to the full functioning of our economy going forward. So again, we're talking about elements of the eight-step blueprint from You Are the Brand by Mike Kim. And again, this is the opportunity to showcase your unique expertise and build a highly profitable and personally fulfilling business. Now, we'll be looking at two of the steps today. The first one will be platform. In other words, What's your stage to speak on? And the other big products, what is it you're going to uh, have people pay you for, quite frankly? So having a platform, you need a home base. You need some place where people know where to find you. Now, it can be a simple website. From that, you can uh, develop an email list and connect with people that way. Or to really get started quickly and soon, you can just work on updating your LinkedIn profile. Now, when we talk about a simple website, I really mean it could maybe just be three or four pages. There could be a home page, an about you page, a work with me page, and maybe a blog or someplace where you can share some of your thoughts. Another question that comes up for many people is, what do I name my website or my brand? And should I find some really nifty name? Basically, because it's just going to be you, it's just simpler to use your name. You'll be connecting with people who want to connect with you and not some company name. Now, and you are the brand. Mike talks about the idea that success is sequential, not simultaneous. There's all kinds of things you can do and you can get overwhelmed by all the different activities you could do trying to do them all at once. So what Mike recommended and what he did was do one big project a year. So a, a list might be this year would be your website. Next year, your implementing your one-on-one coaching or consulting. Maybe the following year, you ramp up your blog. Then after that, maybe you go into uh, group coaching. Again, group coaching and one-on-one coaching has the advantage of being low cost and having low complexity. Then you may do some of the more complex things like a podcast or actually creating products to sell. But you can start out consistently just posting on LinkedIn or other social websites where your audience might be. But in the long run, you do need to have your own platform, your own home base, because obviously LinkedIn, Facebook, all those places, can they can change their algorithms. They can change how they display your work. So you don't own that, but you would own your email list and own your website. Now, I will say, if you're going to post on LinkedIn or Facebook, wherever, save that content because you can reuse that in the future on blogs or use it to uh, create podcasts. So as you, even if, when you're just starting, remember to keep that content around because you'll find ways to use it over and over again. Now, if you're going to speak or do video, this may be something you're not familiar with. It. I'm not familiar with it. And one of my good friends said, Lynn, you have to be ready to practice in public. 
and went on to say, you really have to be willing to be bad because only through actual practice are you going to get better on some of these things. So again, the fact that it's not perfect, again, this is one of those mindset shifts you need as an entrepreneur. You need to just move forward and then start improving as you go. Another thing Mike suggests is you're not going to start a business all at once. And we all have high hopes for what we want to make in terms of our business. But he says, go ahead and decide what's the monthly income you'd like to bring in, but then see if you can start making 10% of that each month. So it could be you're doing a something very simple, one-on-one -on -one coaching or just individual coaching calls, things like that. But try to just get that momentum going. You may find yourself hitting a windfall project, maybe with your former company or anything like that. This is what I did. But don't let that keep you from creating other income or continuing to build your brand. That probably set me back a little bit because I got so focused on doing this one big project that I let some of the other stuff slide for a while. So again, you've got a whole business there. Don't let the fact that you got one windfall hold you back. Then when we think about your bio, in theory, the bio is about you. The LinkedIn bio is traditionally has been your resume, but you know, it's actually not about you. First, it's about them and the value you're going to provide to these potential clients. We go back to that uh, PB3 I mentioned in earlier episodes, uh, the three questions, what pisses you off? What breaks your heart? What's the big problem you solve? This is where you start finding out what's that story you're going to tell people in your bio. And then as you move down the second part of it, you may have personal stories, pictures, things, because people are interested. They want to get to know you. They want to buy from a person, not just a name. So one of the things that Mike suggests is you could try doing a post or an email uh, on simple things like things you didn't know about me. We'll talk about your first job, maybe an interesting travel story, family tradition, what you wanted to be as a kid. Again, the idea is you want to have value that you're going to share with them, but you also want to be a real person to people. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is products. And I would suggest that the first thing when you consider this uh, idea is what's your primary voice? What is the thing you're either most comfortable at or what you really want to do? And here are just some thoughts. You may primarily think of yourself as a speaker or maybe as a coach or a consultant or as a writer. Or maybe you like to create training projects. So it's one of those things. Think about what your primary voice might, might be. You don't want to do them all, but where's a good place for you to start and get some momentum? A good friend once asked me as we were starting out, he says, okay, I want you to answer the question, what do you want me to pay you for? it? You have to make this simple. It has to be targeted. People can't just say, I'll help you get clarity. That's usually not what uh, somebody's looking at. Again, what Mike recommends is you want to be trying to target what's their 3 a.m. problem. What's keeping them awake? You're not trying to figure out what their daytime problems are. And again, you want to be solving something very specific, not just, hey, I can do anything to help you. The more specific you are, you'd think it would hurt, but it actually really can help you. Now, again, as you think about what it is am I going to sell, quite frankly, the bottom line is most people need help with either time, money, or skills. So those are the things. They, they don't need help with clarity. They don't need help with a lot of stuff. But you can save them time. You can help them make more money or save money. And you can help them create new skills. So as you look at those ideas, reflect back on your career to those times where you enjoyed working on something and it had an impact. And whatever role you choose, just again, as I mentioned earlier, start with one and devote some practice to it. As you talk about doing these things, whatever your product or service is, you need to think of this as a learning process and an experiment. So like any entrepreneur, you're going to go out and try to validate the idea. Then you'll create something, you'll refine it, and you'll relaunch it. So it's a continue. You'll be in conversation with your potential clients finding out what it is they really need because you you honestly don't know at this point again there's a you know simple way that if you want to test an idea you could send out an email or a post with the headline this may not be for you but and then you just share the idea i'm thinking of putting together a, a course or some coaching around this particular topic just hit reply and see what can i send you some more information about it you'll know right away if anybody 
is really asking for more of that. So, and again, as you think about products in particular, start small. You don't need to start with a huge multi-part video course that takes forever and you have to hire all kinds of videographers for do something. You can do it on your own computer. It's simple. Do something quick and simple. And as Micah said, there are some big name people out there that they sell high-end coaching, things like that. But you know what they also do? They'll send things like planners or templates or worksheets. And Mike himself says he has uh, some templates that he's been selling forever, and they still routinely make him money. Don't be afraid to put something simple out there. And it may be something you don't even think much about. It may be so easy for you, but this could be exactly what somebody else needs to take their first step. And then again, having taken that first step, they can engage with you for a few other things. It may be magic to them. So as a final thought, even in the beginning, be careful about giving your time away for free. You could say that your regular rate is this, whatever that may be, but you're discounting it or gifting them with a short call. People who just want free stuff will probably not be good clients in the future. So you should be honoring your expertise and value. And starting to charge something. You want to, again, we've talked, I think, earlier about position. You want to put a position out there. That doesn't mean you may not offer a, a scholarship or something like that for people as you get started. But again, try to think of yourself as honoring your skills and expertise. So to wrap up this episode, we're working our way through You Are the Brand by Mike Kim. And the fundamental questions we always started with was what pisses you off? For me, it was dealing with ageism in the workplace and culture. When I was told once I wasn't good fit for a job, they felt it was a developmental role. Why couldn't I do that? Uh, then what breaks your heart? And for me, it's seeing talented elders forced into the sidelines when, in fact, they want to continue uh, creating value. And what's the big problem you solve? Uh, again, I want to help modern elders create a fulfilling encore career. So with an encore career, the rewards are great. You can work when you want, where you want, and do the work you love. As your coach, I'll help you go farther and faster based on what I've learned from being on this journey for several years. I will soon be offering openings in my group coaching program. These programs will enable you, in conjunction with a peer group, to launch and develop your own encore careers. So to get a powerful start, please contact me. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.